Sean, teach me about an esoteric collecting category that I'm not going to find on most other YouTube channels. You know, I go through YouTube and I find all these hype-driven channels devoted to vintage video games, graded video games, Lego sets, Magic the Gathering, Pokemon cards. I tune into your channel to see unique aspects of the antiques and collectibles trade that I can't get anywhere else. So I want you to show me an esoteric collecting category that is such a niche market that I probably never heard of it before. Okay, I'm going to take your bet. Today we're going to talk about collecting graded lobby cards. Now most of you probably have never even heard of what a lobby card is. Well ironically, it is a subgenre of movie poster collecting. If you look at some of the earlier videos that I did where I film upstairs in this house, or even if I film on my second floor, which I very rarely do, I have done a couple of videos on the second floor of this particular house, you're gonna see that I have a lot of framed vintage movie posters around. From films like Hellraiser, Dune, uh, Saw, Empire Strikes Back, Friday the 13th, Predator, Transformers the movie, The Dark Knight. A lot of these vintage films that came out in the late 70s, the 1980s, 1990s, and even some up until the modern day. I'm a huge Batman fan, so The Dark Knight speaks to me. So I have a lot of posters devoted to Batman Begins, The Dark Knight, Dark Knight Rises. I just don't have the space to display all of them but I do own them. Well, one subset of movie poster collecting is something known as lobby card collecting. Now, I'm gonna show you part of my collection of vintage graded lobby cards because I think that this is a great topic to discuss. There's a company called CGC that you've probably heard of because they grade comic books and pretty much the market for graded comic books have gone bonkers in the last 10 years. Well, most people don't realize this, but CGC also grades movie lobby cards. Now, what are lobby cards and are they still in existence today? To answer the second part of that question, because it's the easiest, the answer is no. Lobby cards are not distributed in U.S. theaters as of present day. Pretty much the practice stopped being a thing right around, I want to say, the 1990s maybe up until the early 2000s, but I really think the 1990s, right around the year 1990, 1992, was pretty much the end of companies producing lobby cards. Well, the next question that everybody has is, Sean, what the hell is a lobby card? A lobby card, and here's an example of a lobby card set. This is one of the highest graded sets, by the way, to the film Raiders of the Lost Ark that came out in 1981. This is pretty much a set of lobby cards from that particular movie. Now, all of these lobby cards in this particular set, there's usually eight to a set. In certain instances, there can be more. They are all 9.8 or 9.9 .9 condition. Now, what makes lobby cards unique is, as the name suggests, these mini posters as they are, were displayed in the lobby of movie theaters as early as the 1920s, the 1930s, the 1940s, the 1950s, the 1960s, the 1970s, and finally, they started to end in their popularity in the 1980s. Films like Empire Strikes Back, Blade Runner, I think even Dune, they all have lobby cards made for them. What a lobby card is, it's generally a set of eight poster-like cards that contains one title lobby card, which is typically the most valuable one in the set because it usually shows a key scene from the movie and it actually has the title info of the movie on it. This is usually the first card in the set. In fact, if you look up here on the CGC label, it'll even say lobby card number one. Most of the title sequences are listed as lobby card number one. Now, the other lobby cards that are in this particular series for any movie, whether we're talking Star Wars, Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, Raiders of the Lost Ark, Temple of Doom, Blade Runner, Indiana Jones and Last Crusade, they all show key pieces or scenes from this particular movie in question. So with this being, here's a 9.9 .9, by the way guys, for this particular movie, Raiders of the Lost Ark, obviously all the scenes on these particular cards are gonna be iconic and related to this movie in question. Now, 
A lot of people ask me, Sean, this is really fascinating. I didn't even know CGC graded anything other than comic books. Well, yes, they obviously grade lobby cards. Should I invest in these items? Now, hear me out on this because this answer is a little bit complex. One of the things that you have to understand, whether you're investing in vintage movie posters, modern movie posters, lobby cards, one sheets, half sheets, all these different terminology that centers around vintage movie poster collecting, the market for vintage movie posters is fragmented at present time. And I know a lot of people don't like that answer when I state something is fragmented. A fragmented market in the antiques and collectibles trade usually isn't a stable market. Now to be fair, if we pull out a lot of these esoteric niche markets and we just talk about vintage movie poster collecting in general, whether we talk about movie posters from the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, or even the modern era, the market for vintage movie posters is established and stable. There's a lot of people going out into that market that want to own an original authentic movie poster to the film Back to the Future or Blade Runner or even going back earlier, the original Halloween film or Friday the 13th or if we go all the way back to the premiere of the Universal Monsters pictures back in the 1930s and the early 1940s, a lot of that market is on fire right now because those are considered iconic films and finding an original movie poster for a film like The Creature from the Black Lagoon or the original Frankenstein or Dracula or Mummy movies back in the 1930s and the 1940s is very hard to do. Those particular items are very scarce. That's why when they come up for auction, those particular items sell for high five figures or if not, six figures or more because a lot of people want those iconic pieces in their collection, whether they're collecting or attempting to invest in those items. Well, the market for lobby cards is a little bit different. For instance, a couple of years back, I was on Heritage Auctions and I fell in love with an original King Kong uh, graded lobby card in 9.2 condition from the original King Kong movie when it first premiered. And the item ended up selling for something like ten or twelve thousand dollars. Well, I was the underbidder on it. I did not win the auction. I came in at like ninety five hundred dollars, and my finger at the time was on the keypad, and I was thinking, do I really want to pay over ten thousand dollars for this item? If you are going after iconic films from the nineteen thirties, the nineteen forties, and the nineteen fifties, lobby cards because they're graded and certified can be a good way to assure what you're buying and know that it is authentic, it's graded, it's placed and sealed in plastic, and it's easy to take care of. If you want to frame this in your house, you can. You can get a frame for this that's UV protected and you can hang it on the wall just like that if you so choose. Now, that said, when we start moving up to the 1970s, the 1980s, and even the early 1990s, and we look at lobby card collecting, you have to understand that the market in those eras is more geared towards vintage movie poster collecting. So rather than going after a high grade Raiders of the Lost Ark movie poster lobby card set of eight cards, most collectors are probably gonna go after the original movie poster to Raiders of the Lost Ark. So that's what you have to understand about this market. It's very fragmented. I was lucky where I got this particular set of lobby cards for a very good price to the point where I couldn't pass it up. I will be honest with you guys, full disclosure, I am probably gonna list this set on eBay because it's not something that I wanna hold long term. I would rather take the money out of it, flip it, and put it into rare coins or another collecting hobby that I do invest in long term. Bobby cards, in my opinion, are a very niche market of the movie poster collecting market. Now to be fair, to be fair, as I've said with the King Kong example, if you want to get yourself an original Frankenstein or Dracula or Bride of Frankenstein lobby card, 
that came out in the 1930s and you're surfing on Heritage and you got ten, twelve, fifteen thousand dollars to spend and you come across a graded lobby card from one of those early Universal Pictures movies, by all means, that can be a great investment. No lie. That market's on fire. It's when you get, though, past the 1970s and you start collecting lobby cards, you have to understand the market's very thin. It's not a market for the average enthusiast out there who's going to put together a collection of various lobby cards. Because let's be honest, guys. If I were to display all eight of these lobby cards in my house, it would take up a lot of space just to freaking display this one set of lobby cards from the Raiders of the Lost Ark. If I wanted to display Star Wars, Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, Blade Runner on top of that, I would literally have to devote two walls of my house to nothing but lobby cards. It's just easier to get a hold of a vintage movie poster, frame it, put it on the wall, and appreciate it for what it is, rather than try to display all these all at the same time, especially given the fact that these usually come in sets of eight. There are certain lobby cards that you can research that actually did have sets higher than eight. 12 and 16, while uncommon, is not hard to find if you know where to look on certain collecting sites, collecting forums, especially on films that came out in the 1950s and 60s. Now, a lot of people ask me, Sean, what about lobby cards from movies like The Day the Earth Stood Still or other science fiction classics from the 1950s, the 1960s. Again, they can be good investments because in that particular era, lobby cards were considered one of the key standards. And again, they can be graded by CGC. So if you're looking at an original movie poster from The Day the Earth Stood Still or you have the ability to buy a 9.2 or a 9.4 original lobby card from that same film, you may be better off going after the graded and condition authenticated lobby card rather than the movie poster. It's just, you really have to analyze the market, you have to know what you're doing, and you have to weigh the cost to owning each and other so that you can make a comparison and a better decision for yourself. To be fairly honest, as I've said before, movie posters are the way to go for most people. Just my opinion and my assessment. I hope you like this video. If you want me to do more videos on niche collecting categories like this, I am happy to. Just let me know in the comment section. Consider liking and subscribing to this channel for more updates like this. Thank you and have a great night.